Right, so a lot of Hollywood is mourning following the sudden loss of actor and comedian Bob Saget, who had a you know, long career, television, stand-up, movies. Over the weekend, he passed away at the age of 65, and he was a young yeah. 65. We, he what was. We see him like see? a year and a half a ago, two, two years, years ago, he was here yeah. in the studio. So it's still not clear how he died. Authorities are saying right now no foul play is suspected, no evidence of drug use and mm -hmm. things like that. He was found by hotel security after he missed his checkout time and his family requested a welfare check. So his death coming less than two weeks after, of course, said uh, so many people and the world, in fact, said goodbye to Betty White. She died on New Year's Eve, just shy of her 100th birthday. Just yesterday we learned her cause of death has been listed as a stroke after having one just six days before her death. And the thing that these two, I think, uh, actors and comedians have in common is they were just well liked. Mm -hmm. I mean, like almost universally liked, especially Betty White in her case. Yeah. And we don't know them in real life, but maybe you're experiencing, you know, feelings of grief or loss uh, yeah. with somebody you didn't even know. So uh, we decided to talk to a psychologist about it right now, and I just blasted right past her name. I like her, uh, uh, Dr. Melissa Estevio. Uh, hi, Dr. Estevio. Good to see you. Thank you for coming in today. Let me yeah. get up here. Good morning, Dr. Estevio. I think a lot of people, uh, thank you for your time, are thinking about uh, these two people passing uh, at a time, I think, that, um, you know, they're already going through a lot of, uh, of things personally already. Uh, can you give us an idea of kind of putting this into perspective? Good morning. Hi. Uh, you know, I think we know that celebrities are not a part of our family. We know that there are people that we don't have connection to. And yet when they come into our house so often and we have this, especially comedic bond with them, it can be incredibly hard when they're gone. Mm. And for these two in particular, I think was what was so difficult is that in a way it kind of felt like an off time loss. Now, yeah. Betty White being 99, goodness, most of us would love to be able to live that long, but the fact that she was so close to a hundred makes it just feel really not okay. Yeah, and for me, uh, actually both of us, you know, we had uh, Bob Saget here in studio, and I wouldn't have guessed he was 65. You know, he's been around for a long time. Yeah. But it's like all of a sudden, whoa, uh, and, and looks like, you know, we don't know everything yet. Looks like he just suddenly passed. It kind of makes you look at your own mortality and say, whoa, uh, you know, no bad days. I mean, that's absolutely the case. I think many of us are living a life thinking that we will be able to make it to 99 and hoping that we'll be able to get there. If all of a sudden our life is cut short at 65, I think it causes us to reflect and say, am I doing everything that I want? Am I living in accordance with my values? Is my life, you know, something that is going to be meaningful with just a few more years left? So it causes a big existential crisis, actually. You know, and you brought up Dr. Stavio at the beginning of your, uh, w when we started chatting with you, you brought up this comedic uh, connection. Troy and I were talking about uh, Robin Williams even yesterday. Remember that on the couch mm. uh, in commercial break? And I think it's people that make you laugh, it, that bring you happiness and joy. Those are the people I think a lot of times where you feel that deeper connection with, right? And, 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 it, and it makes you miss them even more when they're gone. Yeah, I think our real life relationships tend to be complicated. You know, even for the people that we love the most, there's parts of it that are hard and difficult. And what's great about these relationships in a way is that they are very light. They bring levity to our life. So it's hard when something that's almost pure positive now becomes a loss and something negative. I think if there's heaviness in our life, it just feels like there's more heaviness and it's even sadder. Yeah, you know, and I'm glad you brought up heaviness. I feel like there's this general malaise. I don't even know yeah. what to say. Uh, I know a lot of young people. I, I, my middle daughter lost her um, high school graduation. She was shut in her dorm room for her first year at college. You know, you, people have lost loved ones and colleagues yeah. and things like that. How are we going to work through this? Is, is, are there strategies to kind of pop up our mood and, and get us going again? Yeah. So I think that people often feel crazy when they can't put a word to what they're going through. So I think, again, the first step is not actually negative. It's to say, yep, the theme of the past three years is loss in some way, shape or form, either death or loss of expectations or loss of goals. And then I think after that, it's really being able to say, OK, well, if there has been this kind of loss, what are some of the positives that we can have in our life that we can control? So can we you know, set a new goal or can we invest more times in our relationships and really be able to hold tight to the things that we do have that aren't gone? Good point, Dr. Yeah. Estevio. Thank you so much for your time this morning and for bringing us a little bit of uh, levity, right? Just kind of helping us to understand exactly what we're going through. So have a great Tuesday. We appreciate your time. Always nice having you of on. Course. Thank you, doctor. Thank you.